In this video we'll explore the visual interface that Emacs presents to you in both the graphical and terminal Emacs sessions. We'll also briefly compare the visual differences between the two and touch upon the most important distinctions. When you open up a graphical Emacs session you will be presented with what's called in Emacs terminology a frame. Let's walk through exactly what functionality is exposed to you through the Emacs frame interface. At the top of the frame is the menu bar. Here you will find the usual file and edit menus along with some other ones which are Emacs specific. Going through the menu bar is a good way to explore the functionality that Emacs offers out of the box. Also if a key binding exists for that functionality it is shown making it easier to increase your familiarity with Emacs commands. Under the menu bar is the toolbar. The toolbar provides quick access buttons to commonly used commands such as opening existing files. In reality you will most likely end up customizing Emacs to not bother even showing the toolbar. That's because all of the functionality on the toolbar has corresponding key bindings which you most likely will use instead. But for those who find the toolbar more convenient they could simply just keep it. Underneath the toolbar is a window which displays a buffer. The buffer contains whatever it is that you are editing. It is called a buffer because it refers to the buffer of memory which holds the data that you are editing in Emacs. In most cases the buffer will just contain text but in certain circumstances you may also see buffers containing images or other multimedia items. We can use the buffers menu on the menu bar to change the buffer that is displayed in the window. You can also change the buffer within a window as well as create more windows horizontally or vertically using the relevant key bindings but we will cover that properly in a future video on the course. Although you can have multiple windows inside a frame there can only be one active window in which you are able to type. The selected active window will always show a prominent cursor. You can see that here with the cursor that is blinking. Also by default windows will have a scroll bar. I usually customize Emacs to not have the scroll bar for each window because I never use it and it's a waste of screen space for me. We will cover how to customize this behavior within Emacs in a future video on the course. The last line of the window is called the mode line. This displays various information about what is going on in the buffer including for example the status information. The status information itself includes a lot of other details such as the coding system which will almost always be Unicode, the end of line style which will vary depending on the operating system and will either be Windows, Unix or Mac, whether the buffer is read only or not and whether the buffer has changed since it was originally opened. The mode line also contains the name of the buffer. When a buffer has been created by Emacs the name usually starts and ends with a star as is the case here with the scratch buffer. The next bit on the mode line currently says all. This indicator's purpose is to let you know which part of the buffer you are currently looking at as a percentage. In this case since all of the buffer is displayed it says all but if the buffer was larger it could say for example top to indicate you are looking at the top of the buffer, bottom to indicate you are looking at the bottom or say 54% to indicate that the first line displayed in the buffer is 54% from the top. The next part of the mode line shows which line of the buffer your cursor is currently at. In this case it's line 16. The last part of the mode line displays the major and minor modes which are currently enabled. These are discussed in more detail in other videos but for now you should know that major and minor modes add specific functionality into Emacs. In this case the major mode is lisp interaction mode which means there will be specific key bindings available for lisp interaction. There aren't currently any minor modes shown here right now but if I was to enable one such as visual line mode then it would appear with its own indicator next to the major mode. Don't worry about what visual line mode is I'll cover that in a later video on the course. For now I just wanted to show you how the mode line changes when a minor mode is enabled. As you can see in the case of visual line mode the indicator wrap is shown. The last part of the frame at the bottom is the mini buffer. This is used to display small amounts of text for various purposes. Sometimes this is also called the echo area because it occasionally echoes your keystrokes back to you. The mini buffer will display helpful information or error messages when a command cannot do its job. If you miss any text which is echoed out into the mini buffer you can see it by viewing the messages buffer. The mini buffer is also used to prompt the user for input. For example if you try and open a file the mini buffer will prompt you for the file path of the file you want to open. When the mini buffer is prompting you you can always press Control G to quit from the prompt. Control G is an important key sequence which you should definitely remember. When you are using Emacs in a terminal you are presented with a similar interface but there are slight differences which you will notice immediately. The main one is that although on the graphical display there is a toolbar under the menu there isn't any here on the terminal. Secondly mouse clicking the menu bar that is at the top of the frame does not work on the terminal. 
Instead, in order to access the menu bar in the terminal, you need to press F10 and use the keyboard to navigate. Remember, Ctrl G will exit any prompts. The terminal is also limited in colors in which it can display, but that's not usually much of a problem. All in all, the visual interface between the graphical and terminal Emacs sessions remains mostly the same, with the terminal sessions also having great functionality such as multiple windows. That's it, you now understand the different parts of the Emacs interface which are presented to you when you open up a graphical or terminal Emacs session. If you want to see more helpful tips and tricks on Emacs, be sure to subscribe and check out some of the other videos available on my channel.